As one of the premier musical houses on Broadway, it is only fitting that in 1990, the 46th Street Theater was renamed after one of the most iconic figures in Broadway history. Richard Rodgers was a remarkable Broadway composer and producer and author. There had been a move to name a theater after Richard Rodgers for some time, but it was the great producer Alexander Cohen who really lobbied for it. It is a thrill to know that his name is emblazoned in lights atop Broadway overlooking the theater community that he loved so much. In 2008, a new voice found its way to the Richard Rogers stage with the musical In the Heights. Nothing prepares you for walking into the Richard Rogers Theater and seeing your block up on that stage. Me and my cousin running just another dime. I started writing In the Heights when I was 19 years old, never dreaming we'd hit a Broadway house. I just wanted to get it up. I wanted to get it out of my brain and onto a stage. And the show is very much about the neighborhood I grew up in. Long before In the Heights, the Rogers built a reputation for presenting the best in popular entertainment. You have to recall a time when there were no movies, there was no television, there was no radio when all of these theaters were built. So Broadway was the center of entertainment life for the country. Opened in 1925, the Richard Rogers was the first theater built by construction moguls Irwin and Henry Channon. Irwin wanted to democratize the theater-going experience. When Channon was a young man, he didn't have much money, and he always ended up having to enter the theater through a side entrance, and it always made him feel almost like he didn't belong. Uh, so he decided that when he would build a theater, that it would have one entrance so that everyone was treated the same. A newcomer to Broadway, Erwin Channon wanted his first theater to be impressive. It's a handsome neoclassical building with an arcaded front. It has glazed terracotta details. It's a building that fits into 46th Street. Channon and his architect, Herbert J. Crapp, created a breakthrough in theater design, stadium seating. Critics applauded improved sight lines and acoustics and how a large theater could feel so intimate. This is a very unusual house in that it has this uh, raked back of orchestra, practically unique. And it's great because it gives each seat the feeling that it's for the shows for them and them alone because nobody else has quite the same sight lines. That's fantastic. From the 1940s to the 60s, referred to as the golden age of musicals, the Richard Rogers presented some of its biggest hits. Opening in 1951, the success of Guys and Dolls may have something to do with a kind of nostalgic feeling for the rough and tumble era of the 1920s. In 1961, when How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying appears, it's dripping in irony and asks, is this really what America wants the business of America to be? Over the next few decades, the Rogers continued presenting hit musicals and Pulitzer Prize-winning dramas. In 2002, Twyla Tharp, an acclaimed choreographer whose work expands the boundaries of dance, created a musical inspired by the songs of legendary piano man, Billy Joel. Yes, sir. I didn't know Billy personally, but I knew his music, and I just called him cold. I said, OK, you don't know me. Come here. I have something to show you. And he was so taken with the way movement looked on his music. He said, OK, good. What do you need from me? I said, all your music. He said, fine. I said, he said, I'll send it over the weekend. I said, good idea. The real point is that Broadway theater is a place to be treasured in a kind of way. And when you're there, you're the custodian of people's hopes and dreams and fears. The reason we go to the theater is the reason in the heist was a success, is we long for community. You know, we're all home checking our tweets, and we're checking our YouTube, and, and, and we long to share a laugh with a thousand other people or share a tear. It is one of our greatest exports. We have given the world the musical theater, and that has all emanated from these buildings here on Broadway.